See that over there? Yeah, that person. You know what that is? In the Nerf hobby, we call that an elitist. They only think high-powered springers and flywheelers are worth buying. And anyone else who thinks otherwise is a noob. Well, does my German heritage have something to say to them? Shot in Florida. Hello everyone, welcome back. So, as you can see behind me, we are uh, in a bit of an interesting landscape for this video. We are in the forests of North Carolina, in the middle of our first snow. And today we're going to be covering a pretty interesting blaster. As you can see behind me, or on my shoulder, this is Betty. If you all don't know what this blaster is, I'll make sure to put a link in the description of where you might know this blaster. So yeah, let's quit it with the blabbering and let's get into it. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more. And make sure to leave some comments down in that little comment section about what you want to see next. So let's get into it. Oi! Oi! So, going into a bit of the blaster history. When did and how did I get this blaster? And what is the history of said blaster? Well, I'm glad you asked, hypothetical viewer. So, in around, I'd say 2017, 2018, I wasn't really into Nerf at the time. In fact, I used to think Nerf was for nerds at that time. Obviously, as you can see, I've changed my mind on that significantly. But that's what I used to think. And I used to play Destiny a lot back in the day. <laughs> I'm saying back in the day like I'm like 30 years old, dear god. But I played a lot of Destiny. Destiny 1, of course. And I was looking up Destiny machine guns. Because machine guns and snipers were the thing that I liked to use. And you know what popped up on my YouTube feed? A video about a very interesting Nerf Blaster. A one-of-a-kind Nerf Blaster. So, I watched the video, and I was like, Ooh, I wonder where I could get this. So, for about the next two to three years, I searched everywhere for this blaster, trying to find someone who had it. Funny enough, I did not look in the one place that seems the most obvious, which was going to Heath Pants himself. Now, that sounds stupid, and it was, to not just go directly to the source first, but it was actually pretty funny. I only talked to him about my custom lever action that I'm having built right now by Harrison, and then suddenly I just remembered, hey, wait a minute, you created this. Do you still have it? He said yes. I asked him how much. He said 350, not counting fixing her up. And I was like, hmm, what do you mean? So he showed me these pictures. As you can see, she was in some pretty worn down shape. Heck, I could show you pictures right now about different little pieces, but we'll go into that in the blaster overview. But she was just in rough shape. So I gave him my money and said, give me the thing. So he fixed her up and got her sent to me. 
That's about all there is about this Blaster's history. Not much of it has been written down or shown. Just that one video from a couple years ago. So, I hope you all will enjoy the Blaster overview of what I have named Betty. Let's get into it. <laughs> so, let's go over this beast that has been named Betty. Now, a quick overview of the name. Why did I choose such a interesting name for this blaster? Well, it's actually quite simple. So roughly about after I had gotten this blaster, again, I believe it was, it was around March or so, I was in the auxiliary combat server on Discord. It's currently closed at the moment, as far as I'm aware. But I was in there at the time when we were getting ready for UMBC. And I see the Auxiliary's family, so I was like, hmm. Well, since Heath decided not to give her a name, I will. Because she's definitely deserved one. So I asked the server. I was like, hey, what, what name do you think would fit this blaster? And Judd, the Aussie Nerf Cowboy, being the person he is, jumped in immediately with his recommendation of Belt Fed Betty. Everyone in the server almost immediately agreed with the name. So, she has been deemed Betty. Belt Fed Betty. But, now getting into the actual blaster overview, going from tip to butt, starting up here, obviously you got a nice orange tip right here, because you would obviously want something like that for something this, uh, I don't think I could call it realistic, but it looks definitely more real than a lot of other blasters. Down here you have a long section of Nerf and Strike Rail. They're in the trees. But anyways, you have a long section of End Strike Rail, along with some up here at the top. I don't know why it's not Picatinny, but you know, to each their own. But looking at this beautiful integration work up here, I don't know where he got his inspiration from. But it is truly beautiful. Now, up here at the front, I have a Centurion bipod, because you can't have a machine gun without a bipod. It's ridiculous. And then back here, you have some 3D printed bits right here holding the front section on, because, uh... Five years of digging around in a garage and, you know, wars, she's been a bit damaged. Just a little. But one of the best parts that actually was not on this blaster originally, if I can get it off, is the ammo box. Now you might be like, wait, but the Vulcan has an ammo box. Correct. But they didn't have one painted up for Betty. They had this. Now, I actually think that's a much better way of carrying it, personally. But it was not sent with the blaster, so therefore I don't have it. That is a picture from, I believe it's Heath's sister, over on Instagram. I think it's like, Caffino or something along those lines. But she also helped a lot with this blaster. But they had their own little custom thing right here, which probably explains all of this Velcro stuff on the bottom, which now is starting to make a lot of sense. But obviously, starting back here again, you have the front little latch right here that locks the belt in place with all of the original gizmos and everything that made the Vulcan work the way she does. And again, another little detail added was an actual Vulcan charging handle. Because 
I feel like not having a charging handle on this was ridiculous. Plus, it just feels so nice. I also got rid of the carry handle, because I hold things like an, actual, like an actual rifle. I don't see why someone would carry it like this. That seems stupid to me. So I took it off. Then, back here, above the charging handle, you have a flip-up sight. But... You don't really have a front sight, so you kind of just have one point of reference, which I get it, which I guess is better than no point of reference, but you know, to each their own. And then uh, back here you just have a small little piece of Picatinny rail, which is really flimsy. I'm obviously going to be reworking this blaster a hell of a lot, but yeah. And then down there. As you can see, it's a bit open. You can see down in there a little bit, but you might be like, oh, well, I can't see down there. Well, guess what? On the side right here, they have a piece that can come off that has a magnet in it. And you can see the internals in there. It's a bit crude, but it's a nice way to see if there's any problems in there. And then back here, you have a Centurion grip and stock integrated in the back, which I believe is just about right for me. I think there could be a bit more added to the stock back here, but, you know, that's for a future project. And then if you look back here, there's supposed to be a plate back there to cover that up, but it was got lost. But back there, if you can't see, there is an XD60 connector in there to connect your LiPo battery. And that is about it for the overview of Betty. A nice, simple, amazing blaster. So, let's get into some chronograph testing and firing demo. Where, where is the chronograph testing and firing demo? What do you mean we don't have any? You're telling me we don't have a lipo for this thing? Wow. Well, apparently we do not have any firing demo or chronograph testing right now, sadly. But I will make sure to get one hopefully soon so I can bring you all plenty of firing footage of this beautiful beast. But, I guess that's the end. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to help see Betty back on the channel, make sure to go down in the description and see my Patreon. And help support me, and maybe I can get some firing demos on this blaster. So, I shall see you all in the next one. Bangarang! They're in the trees!